Scott. He's too gone. Look at you! I tried both ways, the green light's on. No, no, my own. So the microphone is working, so I'm going to have to screen at you for the next certain time. So I'm going to call the recess meeting to order. This meeting has been recessed from February 19th uh, until today. So we will take up where we left off. And I will just recap <clears throat> what happened at the last meeting to bring you up to date. So at the last meeting, uh, the Commissioner of Education, uh, if that's his correct title, uh, convened the meeting. And the first thing, uh, the first action that the meeting took was to elect a temporary presiding officer, not a moderator, right. a temporary presiding officer. And that's like somebody who'll give your car a jump start, right? Get the meeting going, and you're going to have the opportunity to elect a moderator a little bit later. But now that we're going, uh, we have a temporary presiding officer. Uh, we got as far as we got as far as taking up half of Article One. Article One uh, was to elect a temporary presiding officer and a clerk. The presiding officer was elected, and then there was a motion to change the order of business on the agenda. There was a motion made passed that the next thing we would do is to decide the question of whether we would adopt Robert's Rules of Order as the procedure for the meeting. Everybody agreed that that should be the next item of business when we last met. So that passed. What that meant was we did not adopt Robert's Rules of Order. All we did was decide that we were going to change the order in which we took up the business of the meeting. All right. So the next thing that happened is uh, there was a motion to recess the meeting until today. So there was no motion to adopt Robert's Rules of Order. There was an intervening motion to recess until today. And after some discussion, that motion uh, was voted on and it was agreed by the body. The majority vote decided to recess and convene again today. So, where that leaves us is that uh, at the last meeting, the next order of business was going to be to see whether we would adopt Robert's rules as the rules of procedure for this meeting. And then, after that, we'll go back to the second part of the first article, which is to elect a clerk, a temporary clerk, and then it's back to regular order, okay? I, I hope that's not confusing. So, the first business we're going to get to is uh, the Roberts Rules. I'd like to remind you that if there is a vote today, you can only vote if you have a name tag. You can only vote if you have a name tag. If there's a vote, I'll ask you to head to the uh, appropriate town clerk's desk, get a paper ballot, and then do what you need to do on the paper ballot, and then put it in the ballot box. But you need, you need to be registered for this meeting and have it on the uh, checklist. Vote check this last time to so have voted. Okay. Any questions? Mike? I was going to move to adopt Robert's Rules of Order. Ah, okay. I think it's already on the floor. All right. So the recess meeting is called to order. And we'll take up what is the order of business. Section 2. What is your pleasure? with respect to section two. Todd Dillard. Robert's rules, the motion's on the floor now after the suspension, correct? You no. Need it, it, yeah. What do you mean? It was on the floor and then the meeting went suspension. Mike just made no, the No, 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 no. Prior meeting. Yes. Robert's rules of order was on, motion was made 
and then it was then the motion was made to suspend. No. So, no. No. Okay. No. All right. That's. I just wanted clarification okay. from what you just said. That's all right. All. I'd love to explain it again. No. <laughs> so you said it. All right. Got it. All right. Thank you for clarifying. So, thank you for clarifying. What is your pleasure with respect to section two? Mike made a motion. Is there a second? Second. Please listen to the motion. The question is, to adopt Roberts or other rules of order which shall govern the parliamentary procedures of the organizational meeting and all subsequent annual and special meetings of the district. That has been moved and seconded. No, is correction. It? But his motion was to adopt Roberts' rules, not other rules. So when you read the motion back, you have to say you adopt Roberts' rules that the government is straight to the That would be an amendment. Correct. We must stay with what the state provided. So I take it that you're suggesting out of the many rules available, Robert's rules is the one you've moved. That's what I moved. I'd be happy to discuss Mason's rules or Jefferson's if you want. Oh, no, no, oh, no, no. 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 <laughs> no, thank you, but no thank you. I, I moved to adopt a friendly amendment that we adopt Robert's rules in this case. I think that, confirm, that conforms with what he asked. All right, so we have a motion. Uh, well, you know, we can't even have a friendly amendment. Call it enough for a minute. We'll work the over here. The mic to the mic. Get out of here. Turn the mic on. All right. I think my throat might last. Steve, there's a small one right on your podium. That's for the camera. Oh. I want to blow his ears out. All right. So we have a motion to adopt Robert's Rules of Order. And a second. Any further discussion? Any further discussion? If there's no further discussion, we'll proceed to the vote. If you vote yes, it means you're in favor of adopting Robert's Rules of Order as the rules for conducting this meeting and all other meetings of this district until that decision is changed. If you vote no, that means you don't want any rules of procedure, which is how we operated last time. I don't recommend it. Hello? Hello? All right, we'll proceed to the vote. Does everybody understand the consequences of their yes or no vote? No questions. Okay. All those in favor of adopting Robert's Rules of Order, what is the hand up for? Okay. You can't vote early. And more than once. All those in favor of adopting Robert's Rules of Order as the rules of parliamentary procedure for this meeting and all subsequent meetings of this group, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed? The eyes appear to have it. Thank you. The eyes have it. And Robert's rules are the rules of procedure. Now we'll go back to Article 1 and elect a temporary clerk to take notes. I make a motion to elect um, Christine Gifford as temporary clerk. Second. Christ Christine Gifford has been nominated. Are there any other nominations for clerk? Any other nominations for clerk? Hearing none, we'll close no nominations. <coughs> Proceed to the vote. All those in favor of Christine Gifford to be temporary clerk until we get to Article 3. Please say aye. 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 All those opposed? Christine Gifford is elected. <coughs> Now, we uh, arrive at Article 3. 
to elect the following officers of the district from among qualified voters of the district, uh, which officers shall assume office upon election and serve for a term of one year or until their successors are elected and qualified. We'll vote for these officers separately. The first office is moderator. May I have your nominations for moderator, please? I make a motion that we elect Laura Spainsworth for moderator. Second. 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 All right, Ainsworth is nominated. Seconds are not required, but surely appreciated by the nominee. Are there any other nominations? I was going to do the same. Steve Fryhoffner is nominated. I'll second that. Thank you. Um, are there any other nominations? Any other nominations? All right. You know, this group is something else. We, we cover a lot of issues in moderator school, but now I'm in the position of presiding over an election in which I'm a candidate. So that doesn't look very good. <laughs> so, um, so what do we do now? Where's the clerk? Where's the newly elected temporary clerk? Would you mind, please, coming to the podium? <laughs> and running this meeting. Now, <coughs> the Vermont Supreme Court has said it's okay for a moderator to preside over the moderator's own uh, nomination if there's only one candidate, which happens to be the person at the podium. But now there are two. So I don't think that ruling applies in this case. And that's why we're going to turn it over and uh, Christine, I guess the first thing you do is voice vote and for each one, and then if it's too close, maybe somebody will request a ballot or a division of the house. Over to you. <laughs> Paper ballot. <laughs> seven people. Seven people. Seven people. Second. Are there seven people who yeah. want to pick? Sorry. No, that's fine. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. Yes, there are seven people. Okay. So, would you please form an orderly line? <laughs> Go to the uh, clerks, get a paper ballot, write the name of your preferred party on the ballot, and then put it in the ballot box. <laughs> Of course. Uh, oh, it's on the other page. 
Laura Lee Wheeler. Introducing Laura Lee Wheeler. Now, Barbara Miller is not here, but she is a Harvard person. She's a Harvard person. Alberta Miller. This goes to show if you don't show up. <laughs> She's not the footnote before. Right. She was at the last meeting. Okay, so maybe some of you, most of you, everybody knows who Alberta Miller is. All right? Let's proceed to the vote. All those in favor of Laura Lee Wheeler to be clerk, please say aye. Aye. All those in favor of Alberta Miller, please say aye. Aye. <laughs> division, division, thank you. Division of the House. That's not a paper ballot, but it requires you to uh, well, how will it be easier to count? If people raise their hands or stand up, what do you prefer? Yeah. Probably standing is easier. Okay. All right. So here's 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 how we divide the house. A very good question. Can you repeat the question? What's the question? Temporary clerk can probably be called upon to finish. Don't think there'll be many objections to that. If there are, I guess we'll hear them at some point. <laughs> all right, so all those in favor of Laura Lee Wheeler, please rise. Oh, well, wait a minute, this may be... All right, so take a look around. Take a look around. All right, now please sit down. <laughs> All those in favor of Alberta Miller, please rise. Please sit down. It appears to me that Laura Lee Wheeler has more votes. So I'm going to say that Laura Lee Wheeler is elected clerk for one year, unless anybody objects and wants a paper ballot. But you all looked around, so. The next officer is that of treasurer. Treasurer for one year. Are there nominations for treasurer for the new school district? Alberta Miller is nominated. Are there other nominations for treasurer? Other nominations for treasurer for the new unified district? <coughs> Hearing none, we'll close the nominations. Um, ballot? No. Uh, Repeat the question. The, mo the, the motion is to have the clerk, the clerk have the clerk cast one ballot. So the suggestion is the motion is to have the clerk cast one ballot. For Laura Lee, no. <laughs> for Al I'm sorry, I'm in the last election. For Alberta Miller for treasurer. Is there a second? Second. Second. Any discussion? What's the point? The point is that we save time and counting, and there's only one candidate. Sounds good. All right. All right. Any further discussion? On the motion and the second. If not, I'll ask you to vote. If you are in favor of the clerk casting one ballot for Alberta Miller, the treasurer, I'm going to ask you to say aye. If you're not in favor of that, say no. So, all those in favor of the clerk 
casting one ballot for Alberta Miller for treasurer for one year. Please say aye. Aye. All those opposed? No. It appears the ayes have it. The ayes have it, and Alberta Miller is elected. The next item is to determine a date and location for the first annual meeting of the district and all subsequent annual meetings. To determine, the next item is, is Article 4, to determine a date and location for the first annual meeting of the district and all subsequent annual meetings which shall not which shall be not earlier than February 1 and not later than June 1 in each year so we need a date between February 1 and June 1 and a location for the annual meeting of the new district are there any suggestions That's, that's getting there. It should be a little more specific. Excuse me. I move that we have the date be the second Thursday in March and the location at Elementary. Second Thursday in March and, and the location Hardwick Elementary. Are there any other suggestions? Playoffs. Playoffs. Repeat. Repeat. Can't hear. The, 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 the question was. <laughs> 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 Playoffs. Are you kidding? The, the observation was that the second Thursday in March is right in the thick of playoff season, and if things go the way we want to, the meeting may be empty because everybody's going to be at the auditorium. Can I amend it to the third Thursday in March? Third Thursday. All right. So now we have the third Thursday in March here at the elementary school as one suggestion. I'll second that. And second. So assuming a second means there cannot be discussion. The last one this week. I'm curious. I don't think that it needs that. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, well, we can suggest another date. You have a motion. We have a motion on the floor. Were you going to suggest another date? No. I was going to ask a question because this organization needs a budget approved by an uh, annual meeting prior to becoming operational June, July 1st. <coughs> Do we need to make a special provision since February has passed and March? So the question is, if, if the date is set for the third Thursday in March, uh, should, what about the budget? Doesn't, have, doesn't it have to be prepared uh, before that? And I think, oh, I had one response. This is for the annual meeting. What would be coming up in this process is the initial meeting. You're talking next year. The date set would be the date set would be for next year, which would be the first annual meeting. If And we do have to pass a budget if they merge by July 1st, but that would be the initial meeting, not the annual meeting. We're talking two different meetings. It's not a canon, right? <laughs> Stand up, please, and yell. Sorry. <laughs> um, I was just going to piggyback on what I was saying that uh, we still, after we do this, we, we're going to have to have another meeting to pass a budget for the merch district if we go that, you know, and elect the board. So this is just creating a structure, and then we're going to have to do this again.
Are there, are there any other suggestions for a time and a location for the meeting? Right back there. Is that you, Carol? I just want to know, is it advantageous to have this meeting, the annual thing, prior to town meetings, so that we have information at town meeting? The question is, is this an advantageous time for the meeting? <laughs> Thank you. The question is, is uh, the third Thursday in March a good time for the annual meeting because it's after the town meeting? After town meeting. After town meeting. After town meeting. Um, does anybody have any suggestions? My job is to run the meeting, not to have any wisdom. <laughs> At Lakeview, we have our annual meeting after town meeting every year, and it doesn't seem to be a problem. The school board still has to have a budget ready to go into town reports, and that's how we elect to have it. It's just separate from town meeting. So, and it's the timing, the budget still has to be ready by a certain time to go to the printer anyway. Is there any more discussion? Mr. Monterey, I would, was just sitting here thinking, I think somewhere in there it should say that those annual meetings will be rotated between the different schools and not always brought to the same school. That would be, that would be, that would be. I don't think we are, it has to be at the place that's the most populous. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I think that's what I was thinking. Mm -hmm. I think that's what I was thinking. It's not part of the original motion. Well, the, the article which cannot be amended says, uh, Choose a date and time for the first annual meeting and all subsequent annual meetings. If you change that to read just one meeting and rotate, it's an amendment to the article that's not permissible under the, the state law, as I understand it. So I'm going to have to, uh, if, if that's a suggestion for an amendment, I'm going to have to rule it out of order because you can't amend these according to the state. <laughs> Yes. Um, would you please? Would you I'm sorry. When I first started at Lakeview, our annual meeting was in February. Don't let the microphone go away. I'm sorry. Thank you. Hi there. Um, when I first started my job at Lakeview as the secretary there, our annual meeting actually used to be in February before and before the town meeting. And we always had trouble getting, you know, everything together in time for that. So that's why Lakeview decided to move it to after town meeting. It gives the gives the school, the, the staff, the central office time to build the budget. It gives you time. We're, this is completely aside from town meeting anyway. So you, you don't vote on it at town meeting. You don't get input on it at town meeting. It's just a different meeting. Um, but it, it's too hard to get the data that you need if you try to move it up. But you have to have an article, we learned, to change it. We used to have it in February. You have to have an article on the warning, like say next year, to change it to revolve at each different school. Or you just have to have an article to ha in your warning in any successive year to say if you want it to rotate to each of the different schools. That's, what, that's the way you have to do it because it has to be voted on. Sir. Um, it occurs to me that there may be. Use the microphone. Yes, please. It occurs to me, and I don't know what the correct parliamentary procedure motion to make is whether to pass over table or to reorganize the uh, items on the warning. But from my perspective, if we decide to have an Australian ballot, having it when town meeting is probably provides the biggest voter base. If it's a meeting in one place, town meeting day probably doesn't work because different town meetings do different things. But uh, can you suggest what the correct motion to make to, to delay this for one item and vote after we've decided whether to hold an Australian ballot election or a meeting? If you want to change the order 
in which to conduct business. You can do that, but it takes two-thirds, two-thirds vote. So, as I understand it, the suggestion is, does it make more sense to choose the date and location for the annual meeting after the body votes on the next item, which is five. That's, that's the question. And somebody should move to suspend the rules um, to accomplish a change in order of business. So moved. I didn't recognize you. Excuse me. So you can't move it. I, and the reason I'm not recognizing you is I saw two or three hands Sir. there before. I'll get to you. Sir. Isn't there a motion on the floor that's uh, already been seconded? Yes. Yes. But you still can suspend the rules. You still can do that. Okay. That's what Robert says. Was there a question over here? I thought I saw a hand. No. No. All right. So, there is now, yes. So I'd like to move that we suspend the rules and take up Article 5 before continuing our discussion of the current Article 4. All right. Is there a second? There is a second. Okay. So, this does not require a majority vote for passage. It requires two-thirds because it's changing the order that we do things. So there's been a motion and a second. Could, could I withdraw my motion <laughs> and make it that we take up Articles 5 and 6 because both involve the nature of a ballot? I was not reading far enough ahead. You can withdraw your motion at any time. So, so now we have another motion. <laughs> we have a motion to proceed with, to consider Articles 5 and 6 in that order, I take it, before uh, addressing Article 4. Is there a second? There is a second. Okay. Motion made and seconded. Catherine. Um, I just had a question. Catherine, you use the mic. Um, I just wanted to understand if we all have to, we all have to meet an annual meeting anyway, so how does it, we have to have a, an annual meeting that can happen where everyone can come to the same place, so I don't see if we're, we can't all go to our town meetings and not have an annual meeting and vote on, even if we vote by Australian ballot at town meeting, we can't, go to town meeting and also expect all three towns to meet in one separate place on town meeting day. Right? I, I'm just, I, I guess that was just my confusion. And no, please. I, I can't call on you. So. Did everybody understand what just transpired? The comment was that um, if you determine to have, and this may be ahead of the game a little bit, if you determine that the annual meeting it's going to be the same day as the town meeting, then you're going to be put, making a difficult choice. Just like Hazel. Just like Hazel. You have a meeting before we vote All right, that's a possibility, so it, it's not a foregone conclusion, because we're still going to set the date for the meeting after we discuss the Australian, after we address the Australian nominations. Is there any further discussion? Any further discussion? All right, the motion on the floor is to change the order of business, is to uh, leave Article 4 and take up in order Articles 5 and 6. That motion has been made, it's seconded. There is uh, no further discussion that I can see. And if that's the case, we'll proceed to the vote which must be two-thirds of this body, not a simple majority, two-thirds. If you vote yes to changing the order of the business, the next thing we're going to do is take up the Australian ballot articles, five and six. And after that, 
will go back to regular order. If you vote no, then we will proceed. We will continue on with discussing Article 4. Does everybody understand the consequences of their yes or no vote? Okay. If you're ready for the vote, we'll go to that right now. All those in favor of suspending the rules to address Articles 5 and 6 right now and then go back to 4, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? No. 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 The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. And that means the next order of business is Article 5 to determine uh, whether to vote on the district's budget and all other public questions by Australian ballot. What is your pleasure with respect to Article 5? I make a motion that we vote the district's budgets and all other public questions by Australian ballot. Second. Second. Motion made and seconded. Please listen to the article. The question is to determine whether to vote on the district's budget and all other public questions by Australian ballot. Is there any discussion? Any discussion? All right. I would just like to remind us that not everybody, I would just like to remind everybody that not all citizens can come to a meeting, but they should be entitled to vote on the budget. And therefore, by having the polls open, whatever hours your particular town does, then they wouldn't have to come to a meeting in Hardwick. They could vote at their local polls like you do the Hazen budget, which is voted on Australian ballot. And we have a good turnout. If you vote, I have been going to school board meetings for over 30 years in this area, and only one other time did I see a crowd that matched this, and that was when Hazen voted to put, or when Hardwick voted to put their budget Australian ballot. So it's that important to people, and I really urge you to support the Australian ballot. Victoria. Hi, I'm Victoria Van Hester from Greensboro. Um, I've been grappling with this issue of the Australian ballot for a couple of weeks now, months actually, because I agree with O'Rice in a lot of ways that the Australian ballot opens up a lot of opportunities for people who work and who may not be able to get to the polls uh, if, it's, if it's a floor vote to cast their vote on a budget. My primary concern with the Australian ballot and what gives me pause is having meetings like this where we get to sit with our neighbors and our colleagues and have a frank discussion about what our schools need and what the budget actually means. So when you look at the ballot, you don't necessarily know what the percentage increase might mean unless you've taken the time to read the reports of the school or you've taken the time to go to an informational meeting. I myself did not go to the Hazen informational meeting this year. I heard from colleagues last night there were only seven people at that meeting. And fortunately, the Hazen budget did pass this year. That was awesome. But there have been other years that it hasn't. And I do have to wonder if it would have passed if more people were engaged in the process and took the time to, to learn what the increases meant. I, I really still don't know how I feel and how I'm going to vote on this motion. I just wanted to share some of my thoughts about this and what my concerns are, and that I really don't want people to feel disenfranchised from their vote. I want them to be able to get out there and participate, and at the same time, I think an informed electorate is a much more powerful electorate and is an electorate that does the right thing for kids. So it's, it's tricky to figure out what the balance is. I just wanted to share my thoughts with people because we're all here to talk about this stuff. So thank you. Peter Peltz. Peter Peltz from Woodbury. I just want to sort of uh, support what you just said. And, and I'm, I'm thinking about just a formative stage. We are in three communities, three coming together to try to figure out how, four, excuse me, standards, um, three school districts, oh, three school districts, <laughs> three school districts. Um, um, and I think it's really important that, that we work and, and we form, a, form a, a, a good rapport with each other and, 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 and process this. And when Union High Schools were first formed, there were a lot of open, open meeting uh, at that point. 
they then transition to, uh, to Australian ballots. It's very difficult to go from Australian back to, to, to open meeting. You can always do this later, but I just, I'm, I'm, I think that this is really critical that we really work together. The, the, the breakout groups have been doing a great job, but we as communities have to participate in this as well. As well and I just want to uh, speak to that. I, I, and the other, the other thing is if we did do an open meeting, you can do it at the, you can do it, it at the annual meeting, you want the same, vote for the budget at the annual meeting. Thank you. Steve. Diana Paduzzi. Statue of Liberty. <laughs> I'm just concerned with uh, the mention of all other public questions being um, voted by Australian ballot because things are going to come up over the next couple of years. Um, however, however many years, closing schools and things like that that need to have more discussion than just being an Australian ballot. Right. I just said, I'm Diane Yannakaitis from Standard. I want to echo what some other people have said. This is a fabulous turnout. We're all new. This is a forming district. I think we need to take the opportunity to really talk with each other. This is it. We can always vote later to do Australian ballot. Folks really want to do that. Um, but that's, that's, I think it's really important. Jennifer Fee. Jennifer Slate's mentioned in Hardwick. Um, I'd like to vote, I'd like to stress that we vote by um, Australian ballot. I think there are a lot of people. We have a great turnout tonight, and this is fabulous. Um, there are a lot of people who can't be here tonight and who can't be here when we have budget meetings and we have annual meetings who don't get a voice. You know, people who might even be out of town and could vote by, by um, absentee ballot otherwise. I think we need to add as many voices in this as we can. And if people, you know, there are a lot of people who can't be at these meetings for various reasons. And if we don't have a vote by Australian ballot, they don't get a voice. So I'd like to have a vote by Australian ballot. Hi, I'm Todd Manchester from Hardwick. Um, while I appreciate the discussion, I think definitely need to have more discussion. Um, I think taxpayers have a right to vote on the school budget, especially when we're talking about something in you know tens of millions. It's, it's, it's a ridiculous thing to think that a hundred people can walk up here and put a vote out and say this is you know the, the will of the people because you're spending other people's money. So I, I mean I, I want to talk about school budgets and I think it's important but I think they have a right and a say so in this as well. And if it was up to me, it would always be Australian ballot, and it would always be where the, an absentee could come in and also vote on this too. Because it's an important issue, and everyone that's in this town should have the same right that you do. That's all I have. Is there any more discussion on the motion? Yes. Very simple question on normal reason from Harvard. And the language of what we may vote on says district budget and all other and all other public questions. Well, a budget is one kind of question. There may be questions that come up that require people to sit down together, ponder, think, figure out, understand what is really what is helpful, useful, what we ought to do. So I belatedly dislike the wording of this motion as it now stands. Reda, Reda Dunham. Yeah. 
question be split into two where we absentee ballot for budget and meetings for all other public questions? I don't know what other public questions would be. Is that allowed? No. no. I would say no because as written, these articles must be voted on as written, and that is the direction from the state. And I think parsing, parsing is tantamount. Use the, use the microphone, please. Yeah. I think dividing the question uh, so that it may result in having one class of business by Australian ballot and another by public business, that's tantamount, that's the same thing as amending this article. Now maybe you can do that next year. You can have at the next meeting. But for this meeting, the articles must stand as, as they are written. So um, I'm not a legal expert, but just simply understanding the instruction not to allow amendments to the articles, I, I'll have to say it's not permitted. Is there any further discussion? Catherine. Yield Beth. All right, Beth LaCour from Hardwick, and I'd just like to say the SAP is running. There's many more people that would be here tonight if the SAP wasn't running. Um, there's farmers, there's self-employed people, there's single parents, and I know they can carve out, you know, that five or ten minutes to park their car and come in and vote, because it is important. Our schools are important to every single person. I personally hate to go to meetings, but end up to be the person at most of the meetings because everybody else doesn't have the time or you take their kids. So I'm just going to say, for the people who are in the farms right now, milking the cows, for the people who are in the woods, you know, trying to get their sap lines running, and everyone else who has other issues that they can't be at this meeting, David, you said it best when we watched the video several times, taxation without representation. Everyone deserves a vote. Um, I just was going to say, if you're voting to have this be a floor vote or not an Australian ballot vote, please know that you need to be making the commitment to come to these meetings and to ask your neighbors to come to these meetings and to, to get the information out there because we all need, if we're really going to commit to having these kinds of meetings where we all sit down, then we need to really all show up to do it and make sure that as many people can be represented as possible. So just, I hear that people are really wanting to be able to have these discussions, and that's wonderful. And I just, if that's the way that you're voting, then please make sure that you're committed to really always coming to these meetings. Any more discussion on Article 5? Any more discussion? Todd, is that you back there? Mr. Moderator, I'd like to call the votes, please. Motions call the question. Is there a second? Second. All right. The motion to call the question is like radical procedure in democracy because it cuts off debate, and that's what we do in a democracy. For that reason, since it's such a radical change from tradition, a majority vote is not sufficient to call the question. You need a two-thirds vote. The call the question motion means that if the question, if you decide to call the question, all debate ceases, and we, the next thing we do is we go to a vote up or down on Article 5. All right? So the motion has been made and seconded to call the question. If you vote yes, you vote for stopping the discussion on this article, stopping all further discussion and proceeding to a vote. If you vote no, then we will not stop the discussion, we'll keep going. Okay? Does everybody understand the consequences of a yes or no vote? Yes. All right? So then, let's proceed to the vote on the motion to call the question. 
All those in favor of calling the question and stopping debate, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, the ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. And we will now proceed to vote on Article 5. Please listen to the article you're about to vote on to determine whether to vote on the district's budget and all other public questions by Australian ballot. If you say aye, then you choose to conduct business by Australian ballot for the budget and all other public questions. If you vote no, then you do not approve of the Australian ballot method for conducting business. Does everybody understand the consequences of a yes or no vote? All right, let's proceed to the vote then. Um, all those in favor of uh, voting on the district's budget and all other public questions by Australian ballot, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? No. no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it and Article 5 passes. Let's turn now to Article 6. What is your pleasure with respect to Article 6? I'd like to make a motion that we elect board members of the district by Australian ballot starting in 2020. The motion uh, is made to determine uh, whether to determine uh, to elect to elect members of the district board by Australian ballot. Is there in 2020? Well, you know, that's a good point. Uh, the, the article itself does not explain what year. This is not Please. Okay. The reason I put a date 2020 to do election of officers was because this year, if we don't pass a straight ballot, it'll go to default, which means we vote from the floor. Due to the short term that we have left between now and July 1st because of the recess, we need to take less time to elect members than Australian ballot would be. To do an Australian ballot, it takes six weeks because the candidates have to have their petitions in to their town clerks the sixth Monday before elections. If we vote from the floor this year, we can get our board going, we can meet the requirements of the law as well as work on what the Senate is currently working on and hopefully come to some settlement before July 1st. If we don't, then we don't have time left to elect a board for them to get a budget and for the budget to be properly warned and voted on before the end of, June, uh, the end of May so that we have a 30-day grace period after we vote on the budget before July 1st. So I called the Secretary of State's office and asked about combining the vote to do floor vote this year, Australian ballot after that, and he suggested not to do that because the default is the floor vote. So if we agree this year to do the floor vote to get us going, then next year we can do the Australian ballot for the reasons that have been mentioned before on Australian balloting, and we can get this problem or this solution going in a timely manner. Thank you. All right. Here's, sir. Can you please explain that a little more? Do you mean we should turn this down so that we can vote by the group this year and then this motion will be taken up later? I'm not, I'm going to address your question, but from another angle. Um, as I have uh, called your attention to several times tonight, the state says that these articles may not be amended. Now, we just heard a suggestion that it would be a better idea to have the Australian ballot start in 2020. But I'm going to, my opinion is that's an amendment, so it's out of order. But I will point out to you, I will point out to you 
that if you do not approve of electing members by Australian ballot, then it falls to a floor vote. So voting up or down on this article accomplishes the goal. If you vote it down, then the officers are not elected by Australian ballot. You can do that later, but they will not be elected by Australian ballot this time around. If you vote yes, elect them by Australian ballot, then it may be, it may be that the vote will occur after June 1. However, uh, July, July 1? Yeah. July 1. That is in the nature of, if I may put it somewhat indelicately, a self-inflicted wound. Because if we got underway earlier, we would have made the deadline. So I don't think when they put these articles together, whoever did it, they were counting on uh, a lawsuit, an intervening lawsuit, and the desire of the members of the new districts to wait until the court had their say on the matter. So in conclusion, in conclusion, I'm going to rule that changing the article by inserting the date 2020 is an amendment. And uh, if you do not want to elect members by Australian ballot, my guess is you're going to vote no on Article 6. Okay? Is that confusing enough? Peter. Voting that large for for, for uh, members of this new board that come from other di other towns. I don't know. Does anybody know the answer to that? Yes. People are going like this. So I think that means yes, it will be an at-large vote. Is what you believe? It depends on the amendments to the article. Right. So the the articles of agreement. <laughs> it depends on how they're set. Okay. Uh, it it depends on business conducted elsewhere. Yeah. Okay. But this article for this meeting is pretty straightforward and pretty simple. <laughs> the question is about uh, what about the articles of agreement, but that's not for us. Is there any more, Victoria? Please use the mic. Please use the mic. Please use the mic. I have to apologize, I missed part of what Ori said because one of my kids was talking to me, but I do want to point out how critically important it is that we get a merged board seated so that they can begin officially working on a merged budget in time because the impact on not getting a budget passed in time is significant for all three of the schools in this new district. So I know the Australian ballot is a touchy thing, but if there's a way for us to warn it for next year, if people are really passionate about that, then that's something that the new board can put on the warning for next year's annual meeting. But right now, I'm, I've become, and I know as a person that was supportive of recessing this meeting, because I wanted to hear what the, what the judge was thinking about the injunction. But right now, I really feel that we're under a serious time crunch to make sure that we can get a budget passed in time for our schools to open in August. And I said the same thing at the Lakeview annual meeting last night, so this is pretty standard for me right now. <laughs> All right, it's Ainsley. If I could put a motion on the floor then. You. Steve wrote my first motion out of order, so I would just like to make a motion in order that we can have a positive vote and a negative note, so you know what you're voting on, that we, um, i got to find the right article now, and that we vote, that we elect members of the district board by Australian ballot. That is my motion. Mm -hmm. Do we need a second? <laughs> So, Second. the motion is for Article 6 as written, as written. The question is for this body to determine whether to elect members of the district board by Australian ballot. Is there a second? Second. 
second? There is a second. Is there further discussion? Just to clarify, I'm going to ask everybody to vote no. That's a meeting Okay, that's what happened. If, if you wanted it turned around, then you'd be voting no for yes. This okay. way, by this motion, if you vote yes, you're in favor of the Australian ballot. If you vote no, you're in favor of electing the officers, at least for this year, from the floor, and that is what needs to happen. I'm going to vote no. Thank you. <laughs> Is there any further discussion? Any further discussion? I almost feel that I don't have to explain what the consequences of the guests are proposed. Okay, all right. If there's no further discussion, discussion, who are you pointing at? Mr. Manchester. I think I'm a little hard of hearing. I'm trying to understand. So what, what does this look like in subsequent years? Are we going to have to have another formal vote for Australian ballot to bring it back? Yes. 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 So, I, I mean, that's the fact that, yeah, the, the fact that it really happens that way is, is not a guarantee, right? Right now, it's a guarantee. If you vote for it, you're voting for it, you want an absentee ballot. If you don't vote for it, then you're voting for a floor vote. But there's no guarantee of what's going to happen tomorrow. And I know it's a pain. You, you may not like it, but i got to be honest with you. I'm not, I don't appreciate trying to, like, bend it so that you can get what you want and then all of a sudden say, well, we'll just pick this up later. That it's not, a, it's not a matter of getting what we want, it's just that there, the timeline is so tight because of the way that when, when, well the problem is that we won't be able to get a board in place because people have to go out, they have to get 30, 30 um, signatures or I, I can't, the percentage of the voter people they have to get, it has to go into the town clerk's office six weeks before the first, before the Australian ballot vote. So it's the amount of time that... Maybe you can answer a question. So just so everyone hears that... I, what I recognize I, Mr. Manchester. I have a question as it pertains to that. So if we vote that we do it by Australian ballot and it, do, and it defaults to a floor vote, which, which is what I've heard, I, I believe that's to be correct. No, no, no. no, 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 no the opposite. But if I vote for Australian ballot and you don't get the thing in place, what happens next? No school board. Then we lose our budget. We don't have, then we don't have a board. Then we don't have a budget, and then our schools go to 85%. So it's a drop dead date. This year. This year, because of the fact that this meeting was delayed, which is the reason why some of us got up and said we don't want it to be delayed because we have to do work. The, because it was delayed now, the timeline is a lot smaller than it was supposed to be. And so had we decided this back in February, we would have been had enough time for people to get signatures and then had six weeks from that point for there to be a, an Australian vote. It's not about a group trying to get something or another. It's just the, it's it ironic feels like, I, I hear that you it. end up with the you end Mr. Up Manchester. With, I recognize so, it, it, it's ironic that you end up with a vote from the floor that has to be changed by another vote in the subsequent future that may may or not I may or may not be able to vote on. Right, I understand. I, I mean, I, I, I find that very ironic in the midst of this. And and the problem I have with most of this stuff is that. Whatever has happened to cause this delay yes. is not my fault. See, that's right. And so why am I the one that's having to, to make a decision on something I don't really want to have to make on it because for what reason? Give me a good one. I think it's not democracy. It's a vote. I'm being, I'm being jammed into a corner. I'm going to vote how I want to vote, but I'm saying I'm being jammed in the corner by this and, and everyone else is being coerced in this way because we're in a time crunch. Of no fault of our own. Jennifer, did you have your hand up? Well said. So we are in a difficult position, and 
it, you know, if we want to look for blame, I mean, you know, people who were here at the last meeting voted. And everyone here had the chance to be at the last meeting. Not a lot of people came. The majority of the people who were here at the last meeting voted to delay this meeting. So that's why we're in this position, because the meeting was delayed. And whether you were here or not, you had the option to be here. You weren't here. I didn't want to be in No, there was a it meeting. It wasn't my choice either. It was porn. I'm sorry you didn't know about it, sir. We're here now, and this is the only option we have left to us. Because the meeting was delayed, we're stuck. And I don't want to vote but from the floor for board members either. I'd like it to be by Australian ballot. We don't have that option right now, or we will not have a budget ready for July for June 1st. The state set everything up to have the right timelines to be able to have these options. And the majority of the people at the last meeting chose not to take that option. They chose to delay it. So we're stuck. And this is and if you vote to we have to have a by Australian ballot, we're not gonna have a budget. And I can't even imagine what the consequences are going to be of that come July 1st when the old budgets end and our, when our schools merge. So we're in a bad situation, absolutely. But this is the only option we have right now. All right, there's three or four hands up. Get to you one at a time. If I don't remember, put your hand up again. Jennifer Lodge. I understand what's going on. So there's an easy way to um, deal with this situation. After we vote from the floor for the first one, anybody that is a member of this new school can petition the school board, and they have to act within 30 days, I believe, right, to switch back to Australian ballot. You always have your right to petition the school board with, I think it's five, percent of the legal voters of all three towns combined. So four towns. four towns combined. So that would be less than 60 people and you could um, petition the school to get it turned back to Australian ballot. Stephen Murphy. Hello, I'm Stephen Murphy from Woodbury. I'm on the Woodbury School Board, and regardless of how we got here, it's in the best interest of our children to vote to elect members from the floor, and then we can sort it out after that, but that's where we are. I saw a hand up over there, but the gentleman in the corner wanted to speak. Sir. One question. Second. Motion made and seconded to call the question. And if you recall from a few minutes ago, the effect of a motion to call the question that is passed is that further debate on the article stops and we proceed immediately to a vote. In this case, if you vote yes to call the question, debate on Article 6 will stop and then the next thing we're going to do is have an up or down vote on Article 6. There's no debate, there's no amendment on a motion to call the question. So I will proceed immediately to asking the body to vote their views on stopping further debate on this question. If you want to stop further debate, you will be in favor of the motion to call the question. You should say aye. If you want to continue the discussion, you should say no. Does everybody understand the consequences of their vote? Very well, we'll proceed to the vote. All those in favor of ceasing discussion on Article 6, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed? No. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. And we will now turn directly to voting on Article 6. Please listen to the article that you're about to vote on. The article is to determine whether to elect members of the district board by Australian ballot. If you are in favor of electing uh, district uh, board members by Australian ballot, you should say aye. If you're not in favor, of electing district board members by Australian ballot, you should say no. Does everybody understand the consequences of their vote? All right, I'm going to then ask you to vote on the question. All those 
in favor of electing members of the district board by Australian ballot, say aye. Aye. <laughs> All those opposed say no. No. The no's appear to have it. The no's have it, and Article 6 fails. And now, an old friend, Article 4. <laughs> What is your pleasure with respect to Article 4? I'm reminded that we do have a motion on the floor, and the date and location uh, proposed is the third Thursday in March, right here. Is there any further discussion? Sir? I'd like to point out that... Uh, I can hear you. The I'd like to point out that the first and third Thursdays uh, are the select board meetings in Hardrick, mm -hmm. so we should choose yeah. an alternate Thursday. Okay, uh, that's not equivalent to proposing an alternate, so we still have one day at a time. seconded and presented to the body, the motion doesn't belong to you anymore. It belongs to the body. So I must decline the invitation to withdraw the motion. All rise. I would like to offer an amendment to the motion that we meet the second Thursday in March. No, we just said, oh, that was basketball. Then we, Wednesday. Tess Martin Hardwick, I would, would the body consider amending the motion to coincide the, this district annual meeting with the Hazen district annual meeting? <laughs> Only one amendment allowed at a time. I did twice to consider. You didn't make they, it up? They killed me, never got a second, it's not there. Okay, I thought I heard a second, but apparently not, sorry. <laughs> Which traditionally has been the Monday before, the, the week before town meeting, the Monday on the week before town meeting at night at Hazen. Last Monday of February, thank you, Laura. <laughs> Right. So there is an amendment to the motion. We have to deal with the amendment first before we get to the main motion. So, and, and the amendment must be seconded before we get to it. Hang on, I got to tell you what it is. So the motion is to have the, the date and I presume the location remains the same. That the, but in material part, the date of the annual meeting will be the last Monday in February. Is that correct? Is that what you? That's how it's traditionally is. Well, I need to know what the motion is so people can vote on it. Coincide with Hazen's meeting, which is the last one. 
All right, there's motion is withdrawn. We are back to the third Thursday in March, right here. Is there any further discussion? Catherine? Yes, certainly. I make an amendment to be the to have it be the Monday before town meeting. So not the the Monday night before town meeting. It's still, I know it is, but everybody's back for town meeting theoretically, right? No. No. Okay. Never mind, I would draw Okay. Is there any further discussion? Any further discussion on this article? One quick comment. Lakeview used to have their meeting during vacation week. Not a good idea, folks. A lot of people are gone and don't get back. You know. Did everybody hear that? No. It's, it's the suggestion was that, that the dates suggested previously were in the vacation period, and in the speaker's experience, there were not a lot of people that attended a meeting during vacation. Are you are, are you proposing an amendment? And what is your amendment? <laughs> motion made to hold the meeting on the first. The amended motion is to hold the meeting on the first Monday, first Monday of April. Is there a second? Seven. There is a second. Is there any further discussion? Jennifer. I'm concerned if we have the annual meeting after town meeting, and the, that means we have to have a separate budget vote, aside from the voting on town meeting, where you get a lot of people, fewer people out to vote. We chose to have the vote for the budget by Australian ballot so that we can have more people involved in the vote and give more people a voice. If we have a separate vote, we're going to lose a lot of people. So if we have the annual meeting before town meeting, then we can have the vote for the budget on town meeting day when everyone is already coming in to vote for everything else. So I'd like to propose that we have the annual meeting two weeks before town meeting day. It's not during the vacation week. It's the week before the vacation week. Then we have time for people to find, learn about the budget, understand what's going on, and vote for the budget on town meeting day. One amendment at a time. <laughs> it, it's not only Robert's rules, but if you don't want to see my head explode with multiple <laughs> amendments going up here, it won't be a pretty sight. So, now we have an amended motion to hold the meeting, and I think I have this right, please correct me if I'm wrong, on the first Monday in April here. Have I got that right? First Monday in April here. Any further discussion? Any further discussion? What's the meeting for? <laughs> What's the annual meeting it's for? It's been so long, I forgot. <laughs> the annual meeting uh, is, uh, well, at, at Hazen, we have an annual meeting, and it's to elect officers and to, uh, to vote on, on questions that need a vote. Um, what else did we do this year? Report. Budget. Talk about the budget. The report. Gordon Young. You discussed the budget. That was the informational meeting before the annual meeting. They happened together. Well, they happened at two different times. They're not the same meeting. The Hazen one happened, they're contiguous. They are contiguous. They happen one after another. And contiguous means there's a line between the two, they're separate. Retta Dunlap. So the new school board can choose when to have an informational meeting, which could be before town meeting, and still hold an annual meeting two months later. Yes. Yes. Okay. okay. All right. There's an amendment on the floor that we have to deal with first. And the, the amendment, which has been moved and seconded, is to have the annual meeting on the first Monday in April. First 
Monday in April, right here. Is there any further discussion? There's no further discussion. We'll take action on the amendments. And you know what the amendment is. The amendment proposes to have the meeting first Monday in April, Monday evening, I presume, uh, here. If you vote aye, if you vote yes, you're voting yes to amend the main motion, which, as you may recall, was to have the meeting on a Thursday. Okay. So the first vote is going to be to see whether you want to change the main motion. If you decide that you want to change the main motion, then the second thing we do is we vote on the main motion. In other words, if you vote for this first Monday in April amendment, that doesn't mean the meeting is going to be on the first Monday in April. It means we're going to have to vote on that because we've now changed the main amendment. All right? Sorry, it's like we all died and went to Congress. <laughs> right? Okay. Is there any further discussion on the amendment? Okay. So we'll proceed to the vote then. If you want to change the question to, if you're in favor of the amendment to change the main motion, the date to February, to the first Monday in April, say aye. 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 Not yet. <laughs> Sorry, I gotta explain. That's what they said in the school. And the second, uh, if you don't approve of changing the main motion, say no. A no vote means let's go back and vote on the third Thursday suggestion. Okay? All right. So let's proceed to the vote. All those in favor of amending the main motion to provide that the annual meeting will be held on the first Monday in April, right here, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? No. no. I think the no's have it. I think the no's have it. The no's do have it, and the amendment does not pass. So we're back to the original motion, which is to have the meeting on the third Thursday in March, here. Uh, there are no amendments on the floor now, so yes, you may, because we haven't got to the vote yet. I'd like to amend the motion to have the annual meeting, um, sorry, Two, two weeks before town meeting. So that would be the last... Tuesday, so that would be the... Two Tuesdays prior to town meeting. Did we just say two Tuesdays prior to town meeting? Okay. At Hardwick Elementary School, it doesn't say a time on here. So, let's not add anything that we don't need to. So, here, at our... Sorry? Seconded. All right, so <clears throat> you've heard the amendment to the motion, which is to schedule the annual meeting exactly two weeks before town meeting at this location. Um, I don't know what that is. That's going to be somewhere in February, right? Okay, everybody can look at the calendars. Well. Two weeks before. That motion is, has been made, has it been seconded? There's a second. Any discussion? Any discussion? Sir? From school board people, do they have time to prepare for that kind of meeting at that time? Yes. I heard comments before that that might be difficult to do. I'd like to hear from them. Jennifer Fleet. I'm the chair of the Harvard Board, and the budget is done by the end of January. So there is time to get that, to get that warrant, to get it out to the public by two weeks before town meeting. Thank you for checking on that. Is there any further discussion on the amendment? Any further discussion on the amendment? Diana Peducci. I guess uh, as a town clerk, I have to throw in all the complications about getting the budget report ready. And 
in the mail in time and uh, doing putting something else before, you know, during that time, the warning period, the mailing, putting the town report together just would be make it really difficult. <coughs> so I think it's a little early. Is there any further discussion? <coughs> Jennifer. Someone correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we're separating out the budgets in the future anyway. <coughs> so that's not going to be together with the town report anyway. It'll be, it, the school budget will be a separate report from the town yeah. report. All right. Is there any more discussion on this latest amendment, main motion? The latest amendment is to hold the annual meeting exactly two weeks prior to the date of the town meeting at this location. Any further discussion? If there's none, we'll proceed to a vote on the amendment. Remember, if you vote yes, the effect of your yes vote is to change the date on the main motion to two weeks before town meeting. So if you approve the main question, the date on the main question being two weeks before town meeting, say aye. If you don't approve of that, say no. Okay, does everybody understand the consequences of their yes or no? Very well, then we'll proceed to the vote. All those in favor of amending the main motion to specify that the date of the annual meeting will be exactly two weeks prior to town meeting, which I presume is the same for all the towns in the world, important for qualification. Okay. All right. All those in favor of, of changing the main motion date to two weeks before the town meeting date for here, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. No. The ayes appear to have it, and the ayes have it. Now, the main motion, please listen to the main motion. The main motion is to uh, schedule the date for the first annual meeting of the district and all subsequent annual meetings to two weeks prior to town meeting day at this location. If you are in favor of that date and location for the town meeting, I'm going to ask you to say aye. If you're not in favor of that particular time and date, please say no at the appropriate time. All right, so let's proceed to the vote. All those in favor of having as a date for the annual meeting the first and subsequent annual meetings to be two weeks prior to the town meeting date and at this location. All those in favor of that, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, say no. 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 The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. And the motion as amended passes. The next order of business is item seven, to determine and approve compensation, if any, to be paid to the officers of the district. And I believe the officers of the district are the three that we elected earlier, the moderator, the clerk, no. Oh, that's right, I stand corrected. Which include the clerk and the treasurer of the board. So, so, the clerk, so this article is for the compensation for the clerk, the treasurer, and for moderate. Right. Okay, all right. Um, are there suggestions? Does anybody want to say 
any amount, and you could say zero. Joanne LeBlanc. be approved for the treasurer of $2,500 a year, the clerk $25, and we have typically done an alternative treasurer of $50. Um, have had no dollar amount for moderator. Treasurer $2,500, clerk $25, and alternative treasurer $50 in case the treasurer is not available. Victoria. Well, the motion is made and seconded. Now you may, is there any further discussion? Now you may proceed. Normally, as clerk of Lakeview, is making thirty dollars a year, so I'd like to amend that she at least be getting thirty dollars a year as clerk. I know it's a small fee, but so <clears throat> the main motion requests twenty-five hundred dollars for the treasurer, uh, twenty-five dollars for the clerk, and fifty dollars for the alternate treasurer. The amendment raises the clerk's stipend a, a by five dollars thirty dollars david kelly well if, if the original motion was made by joanne doesn't she live in albany no, no she lives in hartwood oh okay yeah, sorry okay that's right that's right okay all right is there any further discussion on the amendment to the main motion any further discussion on the amendment michael metcalf it's a simple question, what do the clerks for Asian Union and for Lakeview Union get per year? Lakeview's 30. Asian's 25. I'm sorry, what did the treasurer, my, my, uh, what's the treasurer get? I know that for Lakeview Union it's 570 per year. 570 per treasurer. Yes, sir. Is there someone that can answer that question? Greensboro 250, Hardwick 1,145, Lakeview 570, Woodbury 1,500, Hazen 2,500, Standard zero. Thank you. So we took an average. <laughs> Is there any further discussion on the amendment? Any further discussion on the amendment? The amendment is to have the treasurer paid. The amendment is only on the clerk, but if we're going to vote for it in one piece, I'll, I'll just to make it perfectly clear: treasurer twenty-five hundred, clerk thirty dollars, and the alternate treasurer fifty dollars. No, it's not the. That's not Did I get that amendment. wrong? That's not the amendment. The amendment was just on the clerk, changing it from 25 to 30. That's all. Good point. <laughs> you can amend part of the main motion. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's, what, that's what we'll do then. We'll vote on only the change in the motion, which is uh, to adjust the clerk's fees from 25 to $30. Right? Any further discussion? If not, we'll proceed to the vote. Remember, if you vote for the amendment, you change the main question. The, the, the act still needs to be passed and adopted. So let's turn to a vote on the amendment. All those in favor of amending the main motion to provide $30 to the clerk for 
fees, for annual fees, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? No. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. And the motion is amended. So let's go to a vote on the amended motion, which is now the main motion. Sir. I understand the motion, you have money for an alternative treasure that does not exist. I don't see how we vote for somebody that doesn't exist. Good point. <laughs> <laughs> Something that escaped me in the early early. Thank you again. To provide a stipend for an alternative treasurer would be to amend the articles which we cannot do under state law. So, um, I guess I'm going to rule that part of the uh, main motion out of order. And by that I mean the alternative treasurer stipend. Out of order because it amends the order of business as directed by the state. All right? But the amendment survives uh, in terms of the clerk. So please listen to the motion you're going to vote on. The question is whether to appropriate $2,500 as the annual fee for the treasurer, uh, $25, uh, $30, $30 for the clerk, and zero for the moderator. I'm Norma Spalding. I'm from our voice currently. Okay. Um, I need some clarification on what the duties of the clerk and the treasurer and the moderator are. When do they work? Is the clerk at all of the meetings taking notes? And if so, is that $30 per meeting or is that $30 for the whole year? Can someone answer that question? Diana Peduzzi. No, I can't answer the question, but I don't think so. We need somebody who can answer that question. Jennifer Laundrie. So typically in Hardwick, your clerk just comes to your annual meeting and takes notes for this one meeting. Your treasurer signs all checks for the entire year for your district. So she will be signing all the checks and all the orders from each individual school. Right, from each building. Diana Peduzzi is recognized. Thank you. Uh, just because we don't really have any idea how much work is going to be involved, how many more meetings, I just would like to know if anybody thinks it's uh, more appropriate to have the clerk and treasurer pay an hourly wage instead of a stipend for who knows how many hours. Does anybody want to answer that question? Jennifer. Neither of those are subject to be changed based on the number of meetings that, this, that the school board has. Um, the clerk is just the annual meeting, right? So the clerk is only one meeting, there's only one annual meeting. Anytime you read the whole lecture, yes. Okay. If there's, if there's a special meeting, so should we have three? So should we have it? So should we amend it to have it to change the clerks? Or at least taking your head now. Okay. And the treasurer is set. I mean, that's that's her pay period. So there wouldn't be any change in that unless there wouldn't be any change in that. It's a stipend for the year. I was shaking my head because you were edging toward making a number of men. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, did you want to comment? Yes. Nope. No. Okay. Any other comment or discussion? All right. Um, please listen to the article as amended, uh, not as amended, as you provided. Uh, amended article, uh, which 
can do, which the article wants you to do, is to set the annual uh, fee for the treasurer and the clerk and the moderator. As proposed, the motion is to have the treasurer, uh, the amended motion is to have the treasurer pay $2,500, the clerk $30, and the moderator $0. If you are in favor of that schedule of payments, I will ask you to say aye, if not yet, and if you are against it, please say no. All right, so I'm going to ask you for your views now. All those in favor of providing compensation for the officers as follows. Treasurer, $2,500. Clerk, $25, uh, $30, $30. Moderator, zero. All those in favor of that payment schedule, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, say no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. And that schedule of payment is approved. Twenty-five hundred for the uh, treasurer, thirty dollars for the clerk, zero for the moderator. The next item is to determine and approve compensation, if any, to be paid to members of the district board, not the officers, to the members of the district board of the new uh, unified elementary school. Are there suggestions? Are there suggestions? All right. There is a, a, a motion to to set the stipend at zero dollars, and it's second. Is there any further discussion? Any discussion, sir? What members? I haven't seen anything. That we have members yet. Am I missing something? Well, we're going to get elected at some point, and when they do, they would get the stipend of zero. But where in here are we? We're not electing them. We're not electing them here. This is just organizing. This is an incentive to get people to run. <laughs> <laughs> The motion has been made and seconded to uh, set the compensation uh, to be paid to the members of the district board at zero dollars per annum. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion on that? Hearing none, we'll proceed to the vote. If you are in favor of setting the annual compensation for the uh, district board members at zero dollars, I'll ask you to say aye. If you're not in favor of that arrangement, please say no. Here's the question. All those in favor of compensating members of the district board an annual fee of zero dollars, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. And that's the compensation that the district board members will receive. That's right. <laughs> Moving on to the next item, Article 9. What is your pleasure with regard to Article 9? What is your pleasure with regard to Article 9? So moved. Article 9 is moved. Is there a second? Well, the question, the question is, 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 is what are provisions for payments? Is that the same? Are those three words the same as compensation? No. No. All right. So we're in a bit of a quandary here because the state says, these are the articles you vote on. So my guess is if you take the position that it's impossible to do this, then your vote is kind of inconsequential. Yet you must vote. You must <laughs> vote. <laughs> Victoria. Thank you. 
Any business that we need to do to get this organization operational are the expenses. But right now, to date, it has to do a lot with mailings, advertising. Those are the big expenses at this point. And they're currently sitting on the SU liabilities until June 30th. So we're paying the bills until June 30th. And then when the new budget comes through, then it'll be done. Then it'll go into that. Recognize Catherine Ingram. So, Article 10 is 
how currently school board members borrow money from like Union Bank until the state funds come in. So that's Article 10. Article 9 is just talking about the money it costs for us to do elections and banking and anything else that Joanne has to submit that has a fee to get this um, new district up and running. That's the difference between the two. You may wonder if, uh, I may be getting a little bit out of school here, but you may wonder if a board that is created on July 1 can pay expenses that were incurred before July. I think that's what might be at the bottom of this one. Okay. So, so I think we have a motion and a second. How would you amend the motion? Now, remember, before you get up here, we can't amend the motion to be different than what the state has provided. Right, but we're going to establish the procedure right now. Provision. The provision, I mean. So I'm, I'm, and it's basically what Paul said, but I'm going to use some different words to establish the provision for the payment, just like we were able to set compensation in the prior motion. So if we were to establish the provision in an amendment in a moment, to say something like, or Orleans Southwest Supervisory Union will front us the cost, I don't want to say it exactly, <laughs> will cover the expenses of the Orleans Southwest Union Elementary School District until July 1, at which time Orleans Southwest Union Elementary School District will pay back OSSU. Something like that, but in better language. <laughs> the, it says what it says. And I think the effect of a yes vote here will be to authorize payment of expenses incurred before July 1. I think it's, that's the message. And, and the observer from Crassberry, who carries the purse in this district, is going like this. So I think I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to save that for moderator school next year. <laughs> See if you can do that. All right. So we have, I believe, we have a motion and a second for Article uh, Nine is written. Is there any further discussion, ma'am? Uh, Mary Gagnon from Harvard. Um, I I just was reading it to be that we're voting to establish a provision. And that's the vote, and then we figure out how we're going to do that provision and how it will play out. But we could just go, we're not going to provide for that by voting no. If we read this literally, what, what you're asked to do is only to authorize establishing right. provisions. And then we move on to the then we, if you say yes, then our business is complete. Or if you say no, our business is complete with Article 9. And we move on to Article 10. No. All right. Is that coherent? No. All right. Any further discussion? We're voting on Article 9. Please listen to the motion before you vote. But I think we have to, I think just like we did with the compensation votes and the seven to eight votes, I think we do have to say what the provision is. Yeah. Otherwise, we're not, we're not voting. 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 we I believe we do need to establish that provision. So I think it's going to give us a provision. Do you think this would allow the district to I have to, I have to recognize you. Sir. Hi, I'm Tim Nisbet from Greensboro. 
I believe this is asking us to come up with a plan to make to pay expenses until the first of July. Is that correct? A plan it says to establish, take action. And what he's proposed is to have OSSU pay the bills until the 1st of July. To me, that's what it's saying. Literally, it says to establish procedures. Come up with a plan. Simple plan. Uh, there was a question on, from that corner before we get to you, Rada. Was there a question from that corner? Stephen Murphy. The way I read this sentence is to establish provisions under a voter-proof budget. We don't have the budget yet, so I, I think by voting affirmatively, we are promising to make provisions in the budget. I think that's all we're, we're, we're doing. We're establishing that we will make provisions in the budget. Right. My question is, does this have anything to do with the next two? We said, yeah, we're going to make provisions in the next two. The provisions. Are they different? Well, I, I, think, I think it does indirectly, because if you have expenses, you've got to pay them. And, and Article 10 talks about borrowing money to pay expenses. So the question here is, should we establish provisions? Should we spell out provisions? But it's been pointed out that basically the question is, well, how? How do we establish provisions? And the end of the sentence tells us how provisions will be made. The provisions will be made under a voter-approved budget for the fiscal year no. beginning on that day. Um, I, I should caution you, I'm not authorized to give legal opinions, but no one asked me for my opinion on this, but the way it works, as I read it, is that there are funds for advertising and such that were just explained to us, expended before July 1, in the budget that is prepared to start on July 1, that budget will contain provisions will contain appropriations for payment for those expenses. Mr. Fleet. Uh, I have a question that is either for Joe or for uh, If we vote on it as it's written, without detailing the provision, will we have any problem receiving a bill from OSSU and paying that bill, assuming we end up with a budget someday? <laughs> We'll end up with a budget, presumably, and we will have in that budget provision for expenses. <coughs> OSSU will bill us because they've already been incurring expenses, and if we approve it as written, will we be allowed to pay it? Do we know, Joanne? Or John, who can't answer, but he's channeling yes to Joanne. So then we should probably, I'm uh, suggesting, just vote the darn thing, knowing that OSSU is going to bill us, we're going to pay, it's going to be paid, and everything will be okay. Right. <laughs> Democracy is nasty, isn't it? Is there a question? Just basically, this article, the provision, meaning we're saying it's okay for that budget later to pay back the expenses. Right. Are you ready? Yeah. Sir. Sure. I think that's an excellent way to read it. I agree entirely with that interpretation. Right. So it's, motion to it's, the it's a reasonable interpretation, you could say. <laughs> Sir. I make a motion to call the question. Thank you. <laughs> All right. We did that twice already. Everybody knows the dance. It takes two thirds to cut off further debate, right? I'm going to call the question. Uh, should we cut off further debate on Article 9? If you think yes, let's cut off debate. Say yes. If you want to discuss this a little more, say no. All right? All those in favor of cutting off debate on Article 9, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed? No. The ayes appear to have it. Dissent is safe. The ayes have it. 
So we'll proceed immediately to the vote on Article 9. Does the body, please listen to Article 9 before you vote. Does, uh, is the body in favor of establishing provisions for the payment of any expense incurred by the district before it becomes fully operational on July 1, 2019, under a voter-approved budget for the fiscal year beginning on that date? That is the question. If you are in favor of that, please say aye. If you're not in favor of that, please say no. All those in favor of Article 9 as written, please say aye. aye. All those opposed? No. It appears the ayes have it. The ayes have it, and Article 9 passes. Let's go to Article 10. What is your pleasure with respect to Article 10? Article 10 is moved by Kim Silk and seconded by Orise Ainsworth. Please listen to the article. Uh, will this body authorize the district to borrow money pending receipt of payments from the State Education Fund by the issuance of notes or orders payable not later than one year from the date, provided, however, that the district is authorized by Vermont statutes to borrow sufficient funds to meet pending obligations? Is there any discussion of Article 10? Any discussion of Article 10? Diana Paduzzi. I'd just like to ask, what is the district? Do we have a district yet? Be no, we don't. No, we don't. All right. According to the Agency of Education, the district was developed on November 28th when they signed their order. And therefore, yes, we have a district and we are in the process of organizing that district. And this is one issue that has to be passed in order to organize the district so that when the new board is elected and starts running into issues that they can borrow the money in anticipation of our taxes as well as state aid funds. Is there any further discussion on Article 10? Any further discussion? Hearing none, We'll proceed to the vote. Please listen to the article you're going to vote on. Will this body authorize the district to borrow money pending receipt of payments from the State Education Fund by the issuance of its notes or orders payable not later than one year from date, provided, however, that the district is authorized by Vermont statutes to borrow sufficient funds to meet pending obligations? If you are in favor of that article, I'll ask you to say aye. If you're not in favor of that article, please say no to the question. All those in favor of Article 10, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, say no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it, and Article 10 passes. Now to Article 11. What is your pleasure with respect to Article 11? Article 11 is moved. Is there a second? Second. 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 There's two seconds, actually. Please listen to the article. Uh, the article is to determine whether to authorize the Board of School Directors, pursuant to the provisions of 16 Vermont statutes annotated, section 563, parentheses 10, and parentheses 11, parentheses C, to provide mail notice to residents of the availability of the annual report and proposed school budget in lieu, which I think means instead of, in lieu of distri distributing the annual report and proposed budgets. Is there any discussion of Article 11? Do we have a motion on that? Is that the yes. Motion made and seconded twice. Well, Jennifer? So as a school board member, I would say that you would vote no to this article so that we can continue to mail out all of our budget information um, and annual reports to you guys. Is there any further discussion on Article 11? Are we going to send the budget out? Yeah, Jennifer. 
Can I just ask, do we know what the cost is to mail the, the reports with the budget every year? Does someone make an answer that question? Then in the town, it's not off the top of my head. Victoria. I know everybody really wants to see those pennies, but in light of the fact that we're going with an Australian ballot for budgets, I'm deep, I, in light of the fact that we're going with an Australian ballot for budgets, I'm deeply concerned that if people just get a postcard and they have to go and get the report that has the information, they might not be as informed as they could be if they get it directly in their mailbox. So I personally would prefer not to just do mailing. I'd like to see the annual report and budget in people's mailboxes. Thank you. Is there further discussion on Article 11? Further discussion on Article 11? Hearing none, let's proceed to the vote. So. If you vote yes, if you vote yes, the district will mail you notice of the annual report and the budget. Notice. They will not mail you the annual report and the budget. They'll just send you a notice that it's available. That's if you approve this article. Okay? So, if you approve of that way of disseminating the information in the annual report and of the school budget, say yes. If you do not approve of that way of presenting the information to the voters of the district, say no. Say no. Are you ready? Does everybody know the consequences of their yes or no vote? All right. All those in favor of authorizing the Board of School Directors, pursuant to the provisions of 16 VSA section 563.10 and 11C, to provide mailed notice to the residents of the availability of the annual report and proposed school budget in lieu of distributing the annual report and proposed budget. All those in favor of that procedure, please say aye. All those opposed, say no. 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 Article 11 is defeated, and a motion to adjourn would be in order. So moved. So moved. Yeah. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> Seconded. All those in favor? Thank you. All those opposed? <laughs> 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 <laughs>